G'day guys, Agates here. Russell and the team at Access Worker and Safety have been looking after me and other tradies for years, making sure we get the clothing, equipment and boots we need when we're on the tools. Now, in their typical style, they're taking customer service to the next level and talking to experts on our behalf about life beyond the tools. And let's face it, none of us are getting any younger, so tune in and get some tips from different experts on how to look after your health, wealth, business and your team beyond the tools. This afternoon I'm with Andrew Joblin. Andrew is an author and expert commentator in physical and mental well-being. Um, thanks for your time today, Andrew. You're welcome, Russell. Um, most recently we chatted with Dr. David Munro. David was talking about uh, tradies as industrial athletes yep. um, and their, uh, the importance of their physical, physical well-being. Yes. You're going to expand on that for us as the physical well-being being the basis of our emotional state. You want to tell us a little bit about well, that? Yeah, absolutely, Russell. Um, yeah, so my background, I've got 30 plus years in the health and wellbeing space. So I started coming out of professional sport and then I was 15 years of personal trainer. So I know a lot about that physical yeah. wellbeing stuff. Yeah. But what I realized was through my journey and experiences working with people and myself was that people, as simple as physical wellbeing is, I mean, think about it. It's not hard to eat well. Yeah. It's not hard to exercise. I mean, everyone pretty much knows what to do, but yet most people don't do it. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and so I just, I started to research and reflect and think, well, okay, well, there's way more to it than just telling people what to do and how to exercise, how to move and how to eat. There's actually a mindset component to this. In fact, I came to the conclusion that our physical well-being is 100% mindset. Yep. Because we don't do anything that we don't first think about. Yep. So it's really all about mindset. And then really for probably the last 15 years of, you know, since I've been an author, um, have really focused on trying to help people get in the mindset that would lead them to optimal physical well-being. So whether, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're a tradie or you're a personal trainer or you're an accountant, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, I think it's important. You talked to, when we first chatted about our habits, we create our own habits. And, and and I guess you know perhaps from a uh, looking at it from a tradie's perspective, um, you know, the the perception of what a tradie used to be, uh, the pie, the hot dog at morning tea, has changed so much. Yeah. And it does come back to that creation of habits and and the way that we then perform based on that. Absolutely. I mean, everything we experience in life, every outcome we get is a result of a habit. Yeah. I mean, if you're healthy, lean, fit, the chances are your habits are you eat well, you exercise regularly, yeah. you do the right things, you get enough sleep, that's habit. Um, if you're not healthy, if you're struggling with energy, if you're overweight, if you're lethargic, it's not often, and I've got to say this the right way, it's not luck. And in the previous episode of this, David spoke about that from a, from a physical point of view, from just, just stretching just creating that habit of just stretching just a little bit in the morning, just to, to yep. wake up the body, and you're talking about waking up the mind. Well, ab absolutely, but the thing, the problem, and the challenge with habits, like stretching for a few minutes a day, is that I think we'd all agree that's not a hard thing to do, yeah. yet most people won't do it, yes. because it's in that habit formation process, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm starting to do something that's not normal for me, it's tough. Yeah. And so it's the ability to focus for a period of time until that action becomes an unconscious mm -hmm. habit. Yeah. Like, I mean, the best example I can give is brushing your teeth. I yes. mean, Russell, I'm sure you brush your teeth. I do. And <laughs> I'm glad because we're in close proximity, so if you're not <laughs> brushing it. your teeth, I'll be going, woo! In trouble. But the thing is, I mean, how many times do you actually stop and think deliberately, I must brush my teeth? It's you just, just do it, right? Routine. Yeah. It's not, but it's more than just routine. It's, it's a strong, it's a neural pathway in the brain. Yeah. That's all a habit is. It's a neural pathway in the brain. It's something we repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat until the point. We don't need to think about it anymore. It's just what we do. But if you can just pick one or two really simple things, yeah. basic, almost insignificant, and you can focus for a couple of months every day, but that's the problem. In that, in that couple of months, there's going to be distractions. There's going to be, you know, your old habits are going to try and draw you back. Yeah. You know, so you've got to be very deliberate, very focused. You've got to be very, you know, clear on why you're doing it. Yeah. 
you know, that, that goal or that vision or maybe want to be a better parent or I want to be a more productive business owner or I want to be more profitable. Whatever the reason is, you need something that's compelling enough for you to actually do it yeah. when you've got to deliberately do it, when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. But if you can do it just for a short period of time, what happens is it becomes an unconscious habit. It yeah. becomes a strong neural pathway in the brain and before you know it, eating breakfast is just what you do. Exercise is just what you do. Yeah. Making good choices is just what you do. So really... The actions are not hard. Yeah. Turning them into unconscious routines, yeah. that's where the challenge is, and that will just take some focus. You're a business owner like me and like a lot of our, our customers. Um, you asked yourself a question, how do I want to live? Um, how did that change the course of what you were doing and what you're doing now? It was that decision, that choice to write my first book that put me on a totally different path. And then, and then, sorry, go on, please, go on. Yeah, that one decision almost 20 years ago um, changed my life totally when I started to focus on how do I want to live, not what do I want to do. Now, sorry. And meanwhile, you, you and I are looking at the sneak preview of Tears of Joy, the eighth. This is my eighth. Book. And yeah. Tell us a little bit about it, and, and um, just so the people watching this. Um, can, uh, can look forward to the opportunity to, to read um, Andrew's book. We're going to be doing some promotions around it, the opportunity to win a copy of the book, even the opportunity to spend some time online chatting with uh, Andrew. There'll be more information about that in our uh, next email out to you. TEARS is actually an acronym, um, and that's the pro I call it the process for personal transformation. And the S, if I work backwards, if you work backwards through that acronym, the S stands for success. Now, one of my really powerful messages that success is not about being the most talented or the right circumstances. It's about creating the right routines, and that's what R is. So the habits we were talking about. Absolutely. You create unconscious routines, and you will get predictable results every single time. Now, the right routines will lead to success, yep. happiness, joy, health, well-being, abundance. The wrong routines, as many people will have experienced, yep. will lead to sickness, will lead to to Empty bank accounts will, will lead to broken relationships, we know. And it's all routine. Yeah. That's what it is. And I, yeah. the power, if I can get this message across to you, that power of the routines we create. Yeah. Now, routine has to start with, with an action, and that's what the A is. And if we don't take action, you'll never create a routine. Yes. And that can be difficult for a lot of people because they... <clears throat> they yeah. They resist that initial action because they think they've got to know it all, they've got to have all the answers. My, my uh, encouragement is take action even without the answers because once you start doing something, you learn. Yeah. Even if you stuff it up, right? <laughs> you learn. Sometimes we learn the hard way. I've learned the hard way a lot. Um, but the action will come from a feeling. So the, the E stands for emotion. So when you feel determined, when you're empowered, excited, when you can see something that you want so badly that that real determination will move us into action. Yeah. Now, it all starts with a T, which is the thought. Yeah. That everything starts with what we focus on. The reality is, unfortunately, most people focus on what they don't want. Yeah. Don't want to go to work, I don't want to be sick, I don't want to be unhealthy, I don't want to be broke. And what they do when they, they focus on what they don't want, it leads to more unhealthy emotions mm -hmm. like you know, an anxiety or stress yeah. or fear or anger or bitterness or resentment which led us into a totally different action. Yeah. Fascinating journey, and I can't wait to have a, have a read of the book. And as I say, there will be the opportunity. Um, look out for uh, our next email, which will let you know how to win a copy of uh, Andrew's book, Tears of Joy. Um, Andrew, it's been a real pleasure ha having a chat with you. Really insightful. And I know uh, our customers and, uh, and all of the people watching this will have taken great value from it and uh, really appreciate your time. Russell, thank you very much, and thank you.